Hello friends, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and this is your first time here. Welcome to Booked and Busy. Today's video is going to be a weekly reading vlog. Uh, I just filmed my January TBR and I have three of the five books that I don't have slotted for any particular reading vlog. So I thought why not film this casual vlog and share my thoughts with you about those three books here. So first and foremost, we have Purple and Black by KJ Parker. This is a novella about this man who his entire family is estimated and he has to become the emperor and he surrounds himself with people that he knows and trusts and there's a war coming and he sends his friend and this is like a epistolary novel that covers the communications between the emperor and his friend, the general that he sends off to handle this war. We've got Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross, which is the second book in the Letters of Enchantment duology and the finale. Um, this is a YA fantasy romance following these two characters who are rivals at a newspaper that are competing for this columnist position and unbeknownst to them, they are sending letters to one another or at least uh, the girl is sending letters to the guy thinking that she's sending letters to her brother on the front lines of the war things kind of go from there and there does a, like a romance does obviously develop i'm really excited to see uh how this ends i really was transported with the writing and i hope that that you know continues and she really sticks to landing and then last but not least we've got lord of chaos by robert jordan book six in the will of time i actually have already started this one i am 136 pages into it listening to this on audio so i'm excited to get into this one i will give you as many spoiler free thoughts as i can about lord of chaos but it is the sixth book in a series so yeah i'm excited to read with you and just share what i get up to this week so if you're interested in seeing what happens this week keep on watching let us haul some makeup so i got a sephora gift card for christmas and i put a little bit of my own money with it and did a little bit of damage in sephora and i picked up a couple things so let's go through this first i got a new fragrance that I'm really excited about. This is Burberry Goddess. Like it smells delicious. It smells like joy and happiness and like warm, cozy night. So you're like, wow, this is my life. Uh, it smells great. Believe it or not, this little tiny bottle was a hundred dollars. Um, and like this is like the one ounce, but the 3.4 ounce was a hundred and sixty-eight dollars. But because I had like a hundred of these cards, like I'm just gonna spend that on this. And then if I love it as much as I loved it when i was sampling it when this runs out i will get myself the full size bottle but this smells so amazing mm, i can't always wear it i'm going to debut this tonight i have a date tonight so i am going to wear this for the first time you know take it out for a night on the town i also picked up another body care item this is the fenty um butter drop cream uh it's it's a warm cinnamon shimmering whipped oil body cream and it really smells great and i love to like layer my fragrances like a body oil a body butter putting your fragrance on and just having this like scent bubble that just wraps around you skincare wise i picked up the mini size of the faded brightening serum from topicals i've heard a lot of good things about this over the years and as you can see i do have hyperpigmentation and like dark spots and stuff so i want to try this out um and you're supposed to start out by using it like once a week so i feel like this will last me a pretty good amount of time and then i'll be able to decide at that point like if i want to invest in the full size or if i want to try something else i also got this patrick ta brow gel or brow shaping wax i got the tinted one and it's like this brown color they also have like a clear but because i have dark brows i don't mind having the tint and just having a little bit more color in my brows i really like the packaging it's very reflective um and i'm gonna be using this today i tried it out once before uh, to see if it works and it really does work and unlike the anastasia one it's dry you have to activate it with water or setting spray and so i think that's going to keep it from getting like gunky which is what happened with the anastasia brow freeze one like it had all this like white stuff all over the top and i was like yeah it's time to it's time to hang this one up buddy so and last but not least i got in this order 
I got some half lashes and because I have small eyes it's really like a three quarters lash but this is from Lily Lashes and I have like really wet inner eye inner on inner corners and so they can easily if you have like mascara glue shimmer all that it can get like really crusty so getting these really perfect because it keeps that area dry and like getting irritated because because it's so wet the like glue will start to lift and that's the worst thing ever to be out and your eyelash starts lifting and then i picked up this like lip kit it's not like a, a combined set together but i did pick up these three items with the intent of wearing them together so i got this fashion fair lip liner in the shade truly truffle and fashion fair goes to back in the days this is one of the few brands that used to always like make products for black women and for like when people with darker skin and then i got this charlotte Til tilbury lipstick this is kissing fallen from the lipstick tree in the shade oh honey i saw this girl do a lippy on instagram and she was wearing this lipstick and i saved it i was like i need to pick this up and then i saw it it is stunning it's like a satin i think it's gonna look really pretty and then last but not least for the lip kit, I picked up this Merit Beauty Lip Oil in the shade Taupe. I've seen a lot about Merit Beauty and I swatched everything on my hand so you can kind of see what it looks like. This is the lip liner, this is the lipstick, and this is the lip oil. So I'm going to put that together uh, when I do my makeup in a few minutes and get a vibe for that. And then I also got the charlotte silvery magic contour wand i've seen a lot of people talking about this as well and when i swatched it on my hand i really like the texture and the shade and i've been using the same contour product for years and it works fine but you know there's always room for improvement and i really also like the packaging on this it's very luxe and then you just kind of draw it on and I liked how creamy it was. I think it's going to be good to blend. So those are the makeup products that I got. And then I got a couple pieces of clothing from Abercrombie. Because if you haven't heard me talk about it. And we will talk about it also in this vlog. Is my word for 2024 is elevate. It's ele I want to elevate my wardrobe. I want to start looking more polished in general. Especially when I'm at work. Because like I really don't put makeup on. I don't, I don't wear makeup at work. And I really don't care how I look. And I'm just like... I only get cute on the weekend maybe one or two days out of the weekend if that just one day really and i'm like the work week is the majority of my week it's five days and so when you look good you feel good or at least for me when i look good i feel better so i want to put more effort into my appearance and part of that comes in with having things to wear that look, i feel confident in and look good on me and as someone whose weight fluctuates a lot uh, and i like gain weight it's like I have a closet full of clothes that were cute when I was that size, but they don't fit now. They don't fit the body that I have right now. And so it's like, I have nothing to wear because nothing fits. And, you know, I want to be more social. I talked about this in the last video. I want to be more social. And if I make all these plans, if I had to make all this effort, but then it's like, oh, I can't go because I don't have anything to wear. And I feel dejected trying to get dressed. That's not setting myself up for success. So abercrombie is my favorite like store because i'm guaranteed to go in there and find something that i like that fits my body that is flattering um so picked up a couple things and let me show you them real quick i'm not going to try them on because i tried them on in the store and i'm just going to pop in a picture of me wearing the items over here so first i got another pair of cargo pants and these are the 2000s utility pants um in this like khaki color and they're a mix of textures so you have this like corduroy here and then the, like the typical cargo pant material here and here's a picture of me wearing these bad boys and in the picture of me wearing them you see me wearing this like stone colored seamless bodysuit um i like this like taupey stone color and it's, it's still a neutral but it's a little bit different than like my white my black my grays so i thought this would be a fun addition to my wardrobe um you'll also see this in this picture right here i got this like wrap around sweater um bodysuit situation and in that same picture you also see me wearing this vegan leather skirt you guys know i tried a different one and it was too big so i got this one and it also has shorts underneath and this one fits a lot better 
And then the last thing I picked up, the like stunner of this haul, I got this denim dress and like, it looks so cute on. I got this denim dress. You can see how it looks better in this picture. Really excited to wear and style these pieces. So I'm gonna go put those up in my closet and then I'm gonna start getting ready and doing my makeup because I wanna film and I wanna like talk about my goals and things I wanna accomplish this month. Hello friends, happy Monday. My groceries just arrived, so I'm gonna give you a quick grocery haul. I approached this grocery order differently. Rather than just ordering things and trying to plan meals based on the things that I ordered, I picked three meals that I wanted to eat this week and then I ordered the ingredients for those specific recipes. All the three recipes I got on Instagram, so if you're interested, I will link them down below. So let's quickly just go over what I got. First up, I had some staples that I need to get. So I got some peeled garlic, brown gravy, Kerrygold butter, uh, onion powder, granulated garlic, and some paprika. The first meal that I wanna make this week is lasagna soup. I tried it once last year and I loved it. So I've got some lasagna noodles and I'm making like a high protein version because I'm trying to be on my healthy fitness girl shit. So I've got some Greek yogurt to put in place of sour cream, some chicken broth with less sodium. We've got some diced onions and green chilies ground beef and a white onion the second meal i want to make is this creamy uh chicken with potatoes and broccoli so i already have chicken breast in the freezer so i didn't buy those i got italian parsley some heavy whipping cream a red onion a bag of potatoes which obviously this is more than what i need for one recipe so i'll have this for a while and then some broccoli florets the third meal that i found is this like perfect salmon and it's like made in parchment paper i already have salmon and i already have rice so I didn't need to buy those, but I got the parchment paper, basil, cause it's like a stone ground mustard glaze. And then I'm just gonna slice some avocado for healthy fats and some cucumber for some crunch on that and like drizzle some sauce over it. And then it also has like honey in the sauce. And so I have honey already. Then for breakfast, I have some oatmeal. I like this oatmeal and this has 18 packs and I usually put two packs in each of my like dishes when I make it. We got some oat milk and creamer for my coffee and i also would make this with oat milk if i do like the overnight oats version some beverages i got three cans of poppy two watermelon flavors and these are like a prebiotic soda and then the raspberry rose and then for a snack i have strawberries blueberries and raspberries that i'm gonna wash and like mix together and i'm gonna uh, zest the lemon for the salmon and i'm gonna put some lemon juice and lemon slices in that as well because i really like lemon as a snack and then i just grabbed two pairs to just grab and throw in my backpack so when i go to work so here is the grocery haul and this was $100 because if you spent $100 you got free shipping because so I was like I would rather get free shipping or free delivery and rather than like pay $7 for delivery when I could get you know products for that $7 so this is what we got I will say $100 doesn't do as much as it used to but I'm happy that I have three whole meals to get me through the week um and yeah I have snacks so hopefully I shouldn't spend too much more money other than this hundred dollars on groceries for this week I haven't like talked about this anywhere on my channel yet but I've talked about it like my patrons one of my goals for this year is I want to get like a better control over my finances and I spend a lot of money on like takeout and eating out because I don't like cooking and like cooking for one is so challenging all these other reasons so I'm trying to be proactive about doing that. And one of the barriers for meal prepping for me is that I don't like leftovers. So I'm thinking if I meal prep two meals at once, cause I don't, I don't, I like my food to be fresh and hot. If I meal prep two meals at once, I don't have to eat the same thing for lunch and dinner. And then I'll get tired of it. Cause I cooked once last week and I had it for lunch and dinner and I didn't want it the next day and I still had food left over. So my first plan is the first meal I'm going to make is a lasagna soup because I mostly cook that in the crock pot and that could be one meal and then for dinner I can have maybe like the salmon and that way I'll, I'll be having this, this different meals in the same day and I won't get tired of it. Fingers crossed that that works. I also signed up for Factor and my first delivery will be this coming Sunday. So that's another thing that I'm gonna try where it's like a meal prep service and all the meals come fully cooked and I ordered like six different meals. And so that'll be three days of lunch, three days of dinner or every day of lunch and one dinner. So we're gonna check in over the course of this week and maybe future vlogs on how this like 
project of cooking more at home is working also because i'm you know i have a trainer i'm back in the gym and i'm trying to be more um intentional about what i'm eating because i don't want to counteract my the progress i'm trying to make in the gym with a bad diet so that's what's going on i do have a reading update so i'm going to put these groceries up and then i'm going to give you a reading update hello it is later on monday i have gotten ready to do some filming and i'm ready to talk to you about purple and black so this is one of the books on my tbr this month and i think this was for read a library book so this i wanted to read this one because i had read that short story from kj parker uh in the book of swords and i really liked it and it was really inventive and while this is only 110 pages like i read this in two sittings so i started out and i was like ah it's fine it's not bad but it's like not given what i thought i would get in parker based on the short story which obviously pacing on a short story reveals all that happened at such a faster clip because the the you know the story is bite size but about 70 percent into this things started happening there were like two major reveals and i was like this is what i was waiting on this is what i was waiting for this is the parker that i was looking to get and like when i got to those reveals it changed everything like the the scope of everything that had happened before and i was just like yes i'm into it i'm here for it i can't wait like i'm so engaged so uh as you may have seen in the video where i talked about like reflecting on 2023 i'm not rating books this year so i haven't rated this one but i really do enjoy it i really did enjoy it and i recommend it um it's primarily following this like military campaign uh where this new emperor has sent uh he's filled his government with his friends from college because he was a scholar and he had no hopes of becoming emperor but all his his father and all his siblings they kind of murdered each other in this like never-ending war and so he had to become the emperor and he decided rather than you know fill his government positions with these people who would backstab him he would fill it with his closest friends from from academia who are more involved in all these things and so he sends his best friend uh and makes him the governor of this region where there is like some uprising and there's like this rebellion happening and it's the correspondence between the emperor and his friend the governor that he's set to do this and him trying to quell the rebellion that's happening that's like the and you are just reading it's like epistolary so you're obviously just reading the letters between the two of them man this i i i did not see it coming and i just i had so much fun with this so i do have more parker on my tbr I, you will be seeing more of him on this channel so yeah enjoyed that and i'm happy to get to it i think what i'm gonna start next because i'm in a bit of a ya mood i think i'm gonna pick up ruthless vows so i want to read a little bit of this and then maybe like the first 50 pages and i'll kind of come back and give you an update tonight before i go to bed we'll see Wondering what it might take to get to know someone like you. I've got fistfuls of gold, plenty of riddles to tell, but sometimes I just don't know. But 
Hello friends, I just realized that my mic wasn't hooked up while I was filming this update. So anyway, uh, as you would have seen in the B-roll, I went to my first So Far Sounds concert on Saturday. The guy that I'm seeing uh, goes to those pretty often and he invited me to one. Uh, so I checked it out. My my favorite artist was the first one that you would have seen, which was Cameron May. They're 17 years old and really lo and local to this area, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I haven't been doing much reading recently, um, and that tracks with January of 2023 as well. Uh, I guess I've just been leaning into like the spirit of midwinter and taking things slowly, and I'm not pressuring myself to do more than I am. But I have read the first 140 pages of Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Roth, which is the second book in the Letters of Enchantment series. I was called the Enchantment of Letters in my TBR. And unfortunately, this one is not working well for me. Um, it is very different tonally from Divine Rivals and it also has a trope that I'm really not a big fan of and often <sighs> regresses the romance and so in a lot of ways it's a repeat of the events from book one or like the dynamic and the circumstances between Rowan and Iris in book one but without that magic of their proximity that they had and it also the the writing isn't as lyrical and it doesn't transport me as much so um i think i'm gonna sit this down until there's gonna be like a softy enough i put a hold on the audiobook and when the audiobook comes in and like i think it's like seven weeks i'll probably finish it then but for right now this is counting as a dnf and i am going to take it off my tbr but i'm not going to unhaul it just yet until the audiobook comes in but based on how i'm feeling right now i do think i'll probably end up unhauling a duology 
Uh, it makes me really sad because I thought the first book was really engaging. I thought it had a lot of promise. Um, and the second book just really isn't delivering. Uh, we are in some ways getting more information about like the gods in this world. But at the same time, the plot, the actual plot of like what Roman and Iris are doing is just so similar to the plot of book one. And all the progress that we'd made in their relationship has essentially evaporated because of the trope that's being used. If you want another trope, I'll put it in the description of the video. Just open the thing and I'll tell you what the trope is. But, because I don't want to spoil in case people don't want to know. But yeah, this is not really doing it for me. I'm about to head out to work. So uh, I'm going to try and start something else. And I will update you guys when I get home. Hello friends. I know it is much later in the day and I owe y'all a reading update about Lord of Chaos. But I'm here to talk to you about Factor. Because I, one of my New Year's resolutions and goals I'm trying to go forward is to eat at home more and stop relying so heavily on DoorDash and just to eat better overall. And while I've tried HelloFresh, I've tried Blue Apron and I like those. I don't feel like coming home and cooking every day. So, Income Factor. Um, this isn't sponsored, by the way. I know this probably sounds like the beginning of the sponsorship, but it isn't. I got a lot of ads for them. I saw it when I was researching um, meal kits and things like that because the difference between with Factor is that the food comes already prepared. You just got to microwave it. So, I got my first Factor box. I got six meals. So, two meals for three days or like lunch for every day of the week. So, I wanted to... I wanted to show y'all what I got. And then as the week goes by, I will give you reviews about what I think of the service and whether or not I think you should check it out. So new exclusive deals inside. Free factor box that I can share with people. Coupons, things like that. And it comes insulated, like, let me see. It comes in this insulated, I don't know how well you can see it. And then there's also these like gel packs and this is still really frozen. Um, so you don't have to worry about your food going bad or anything. And let me move y'all back. Uh, the offer code that I use, they have this free, you can get two free wellness shots for life, basically. So I got my two free wellness shots. We've got apple, ginger, lemon, and cayenne. And we've got spinach, kale, celery, and lemon for some live greens. So we got these two. And then my six meals. I think I got all six different things. So this one is artichoke and spinach chicken. Here's what it looks like. And you just pop it in the microwave for two minutes. Um, it looks good. At least this one. I'll report back. You know, I may have to season a little bit. But knowing how many calories there are, having a meal that's ready to go. That's like not, you know, just fried chicken and fries or something quick. But like an actual home cooked meal with like f with fruit, vegetables complex carbs you know protein like an actual variety of food this is honey mustard chicken and i think you can scan this qr code and get all the nutrition facts if you want them as well as there are some on the back that have like preparation instructions and tells you like the calories and things like that this is honey mustard chicken and it has some sauce right there We've got chicken alfredo pasta. Clearly, I like chicken. I did choose some other things. This looks great. Next one, we've got sun-dried tomato chicken. I promise you, I got more than chicken. But, like, that's a whole chicken breast. Or, like, a chicken breast cutlet. Like, half of a chicken breast. So that's, but that's a good amount. So, I'm very pleased thus far. And then this one is creamy pesto pork chop. So 
We've got that. And that has green beans. And then last but not least, we've got blackened salmon. Oh, that looks really good. So we've got two non-chicken dishes. Um, and then at the bottom, there's another of these like packs. So it's very well packaged. Uh, I think with the coupon code that I use, I think I paid like $45. Uh, obviously, that's like a promo. So I paid like $45 for six meals. And like one meal on DoorDash, I'm going to spend $20. Easy. So if I'm counting it like DoorDash, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. So a third of the price is delivered to my door. I know that it's healthier. So hopefully, fingers crossed. It actually tastes good and I want to eat it um, and then also you know two free wellness shots that I can you know knock back easily so great because I would pay like two dollars and thirty cents for each of these at like a Trader Joe's or something like that so really excited about these and I like a little freebie I do like a little freebie so shout out to factor I'll report back if it's worth trying um, I think like I said the code that I used I'll like leave a code in the description if you want to check it out. It's not an affiliate or anything like that. Um, but yeah, so by the, before, by the time that video is over, you'll have gotten like a review of a meal or two. So yeah, hopefully it's good. I'm going to eat even the first one at lunch tomorrow. I'm going to take obviously one of the chicken ones and we'll see. So I have read some of Lord of Chaos today. I've read like 100 pages. Um, and I am currently 317 pages in, which is about 44%. And this is the book that was a book over 700 pages. This is the sixth book in the Wheel of Time. So it's 10 o'clock. I had a very long, very emotionally fraught day. So I'm not going to give you my thoughts right now. I'm going to give you an update in the morning before I go to work. I'm going to put this up. And I just want to get in my bed and just probably have a good cry actually i think that would make me feel better um and i'm gonna finish my glass of wine and that's gonna be the day so i will see y'all tomorrow bye okay so we're about to try the first factor meal i decided to stay home from work today happy tuesday um and since i'm at home i decided why not put it in the oven see what it's like i went with the chicken alfredo pasta with garlicky broccoli and this is 640 calories this is only my first proper meal of the day because it's been one of those kind of days i preheated my oven to 375 and it's to let it cook for seven minutes so i want to try it without seasoning it or anything first to see what I think about it just straight out of the pack and then I will customize it. Ooh, I don't think it's cooked all the way. So I'm gonna stir it up first. Yeah, definitely not cooked all the way. Still frozen, that's okay. Um, it looks like whole wheat pasta, so that's something. Yeah, gonna put it in the oven for, oh, gonna burn myself. Five more minutes and then I will try this again. Okay, it's been five more minutes. Let's see if it's done. I do think it's all thawed out now. The sauce to pasta ratio is good. That's something I was worried about. Okay, time for a taste test. Got a little bite here. 
Oh, also I got my nails taken out today. That set was horrible. It was beautifully designed, but I had broken four nails in two weeks. And I spent like $120 on those. And that's absolutely crazy. That never happens. I go to the same salon. I don't know what happened this time, but I'm deciding to just let my nails breathe for like a week or so, and then I'll get a new set. Hold on, let me try another bite. Not bad at all. Could definitely use some seasoning. Let's try the broccoli. The garlicky broccoli. Yeah. It's good. You can eat it. But I like a little bit more seasoning. A little bit more flavor. So... gonna add a little bit of garlic salt and a little bit of Badia's complete season as you can see I love this stuff I'm almost out I need to order another one put a little bit of that on both okay and I and if I mean I could transfer it to like a bowl but why make more dishes than I need to and I'm gonna put a little little onion powder on it too you know oh i don't i haven't taken the plastic off so no wonder it wasn't coming up Give it another try. Much better. Okay. I would give it like a 7.5 out of 10. 7.5 out of 10 for a food that is real food, isn't horrible for me, and I don't have to cook. I can add a little seasoning. That's I can do that. So, so far I recommend, and I'll give you updates because I probably have this again for dinner. It's like 3.30 right now. Um, so I will be eating dinner later on tonight and we'll try something else. So I'm gonna give you a read update. I'm gonna give you that Lord Chaos update. I'm like 50% in right now, but first I'm gonna eat. Bye. Good morning. Happy, what's today? Thursday? Um, overdue for an update. It's been a crazy couple days. Anyway. Let's talk about Lord of Chaos. So I am 373 pages in, which is like 53%, I think. Um, how much can I really say about the sixth book in a 14 book series is the question. So if you've never heard of Wheel of Time, the Wheel of Time is a classic epic fantasy series. It is a story of the eternal battle between good and evil and the this wheel of time and every age turns the wheel closer to the darkness or closer to the light. And every age, everything that's happened has happened again. Everything that has happened will happen again and everything that has happened has happened before. And there are certain players in this universe that are Taverin and these people pull the will of the world towards them and they pull people towards them and they are catalysts and like change makers in this world. Beyond that, every age has this person called the Dragon Reborn who is the deciding factor essentially in whether or not the age goes closer to the darkness or closer to the light. And we're following this age's dragon and his name is Rand. Um, it's you don't find out who the dragon is i think it's like the end of the first book but it's very clear like the series has been out it's been coming out since the 90s so everybody knows who the dragon is uh, if you've watched the show heard of the show seen it a promo for the show it's very clear who the dragon is but 
the catalyst for this series starting is uh, another big thing of this series is like gender and everything having like a male half and a female half and that's down to the magic as well but men had this taint on them and they kind of destroyed their half of the magic and the men also kind of destroyed the world and that is also why even though the dragon is a man men who can channel in this world are ostracized they are gentle and the way they can no longer access the one power but there is a male side and a female side to this one power and so the women who can channel and use this magic are called Aes Sedai and this Aes Sedai named Rain she comes to this small town and she finds three boys who could who are all Tavarian and one of them is the dragon but in addition to the three boys being the being Tavarian there are two other girls in their village who are connected to them who are very powerful magic users that have this like raw potential and they are also in a way to Varen. and so in the effort to find the dragon and influence these to Varen to make sure that they end up going towards the light they they collect this group of merry men and take them on and journey towards the white tower which is the center of the magic and the the home base of these powerful women in this world and we've, we've gone so 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 far beyond that but at this point ran is a dragon has been the dragon for some time and we really kind of saw him coming into his power in book four but as the series progresses we continue to see him amass more and more power more and more followers so his first like task was to um get these people because he has so many names and that's part of the lore is that he has so many names he's a dragon reborn he's a Kara Khan he's this he's all these other things um and being the Carl Khan is tied with this group of people called the Aiel. And these Aiel are people who live beyond the waste. They are not necessarily nomadic, but they are a warrior like people. And he is destined, the Carl Khan is destined to destroy them and bring them back together and restore them to like their former glory, whatever. So they are his primary shield. They they're like your honor is ours. You have we have taken you into our possession to protect you. Not in a crazy way, but like we are tasked with with protecting you and protecting you from the world and people who want to harm you and the warriors of the aiel are typically women they're called like maidens of the sphere and so in this one it's a ensemble cast but in this one i think we're primarily following rand which i like because rand is the pov that has the most interesting things going on but there are other characters that we're following my camera is about to die and i don't have time to like charge it and give you another update so we'll talk more when i get home bye i don't know why the lights in my kitchen do that little flickering thing on camera but whatever uh it's sunday i desperately need to film today so i'm gonna do my best to make that happen because i didn't film last weekend and i'm behind and all these other things but i have reading updates and i have some stuff to haul for you so i'm gonna like mix them in so first up reading update on lord of chaos because that's what i spoke to you about most recently I am 652 pages into this one, which is like 90%. I have just under 50 pages left. And y'all, the unthinkable has happened. Uh, something that has been a concern for the characters in this story for a majority of this book has, especially for Ren, has finally happened. And I'm just like, how are we gonna get out of this? Is this gonna be like a cliffhanger going to Crown of Swords? Like what's gonna go, what's gonna go on? And then something that kind of upset me about this book, I was pre-warned, but I was still upset, is that um, one of my favorite characters in this series is Perrin. And thus far, my favorite book in the series was The Shadow Rising, which was book four. And Perrin was a huge part of The Shadow Rising. And he said he had such an interesting storyline. And he, in book five, The Fires of Heaven, he was completely absent. Like, he was not on the page at all. So I was looking forward to him being back in the story in Lord of Chaos. Except that we don't actually see Perrin and get his POV until 80% of the book, which is like 500 pages which is actually a little bit more than 500 pages but i'm just like how how are you and i'm like when you add up like five or six hundred pages from fires of heaven he's been absent for almost a thousand for like over a thousand pages of the story like that is a significant amount of time for a character who is Tavarin, who is so pivotal 
whatever. So I don't like that. I do like that he and Rand have been reunited, but now, again, I say, without spoiling, the unthinkable has happened, and I just don't know how we're gonna get out of the situation. I'm really enjoying the dynamic between Rand and men. If you've read the series, you know why that's significant. But also, the like love rhombus in this series is just so funny. Uh, and like Robert Jordan's 1990s, 2000s, early 2000s attempt at like uh non-monogamous polyamorous i don't know what the correct verbiage would be for this particular dynamic it's so interesting because these people have just chosen these women have just chosen rand like <laughs> sure rand has a connection with some of them or whatever some interest has been uh expressed by him but these women are like no you're mine like and it's a wrap like you're gonna be mine i'm gonna bond you you're gonna be this and like that's it and there's definitely a conversation to be had about like consent especially with the like rant alana situation if you haven't read the book that doesn't mean anything to you if you have read it you know what i mean uh and you know if people in the world who talk about how like the, what she did was despicable and like that's one of the worst things you can do to a person da -da 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 -da. uh and where i just left off at the end of chapter 52 Lan is back in the story so that's exciting uh another situation where something is being done to someone without their consent which i don't like and you know maybe that is a, a thing that's being explored in this book or in the series i don't know but i'm enjoying it it's still not it's better than fires of heaven for sure but it's not nearly as good as the shadow rising and that is kind of what i'm hoping we get back to because this is like a fan favorite in the series uh there's pl not plenty but there's still some things that can happen in the last 50 pages that will be interesting but i do think that book seven it's either book seven through i think book seven and through ten are what the what is considered the slog so i don't know how i feel about that but alas i've i've read some of that and i will be finishing that today and then i only have one book left on my january tbr and that is empire silence i have like attempted to start that i read like the first chapter or so but like i have so much anxiety about that book it's actually crazy because i'm just like i'm gonna love it but like what if i don't i'm gonna love it but what if i don't like i'm gonna or i'm gonna be obsessed and then like i'm not gonna be okay i'm gonna be unwell uh so <laughs> you know just girly things but let's get into the haul i'm gonna do the clothing haul first uh i've been doing you know i used to do clothing hauls on my channel whatever but recently over the past like month and a half since december i have been filming like lifestyle vlogs and posting them on patreon and i really enjoyed that i used to have a lifestyle channel i mean it still exists but i haven't been posted i haven't posted on it in years at this point and that is something i think i want to do more of i want to like devote some time and energy into uh post like creating lifestyle content so I've been doing like try on hauls for them, things like that. So I'm not gonna do the try on haul for you guys. I am still gonna do that just on Patreon, but I'm gonna show you the things that I picked up recently. Uh, Abercrombie had a sale and then I've been on the market, on the hunt for like two months to find good jeans that fit well and like are like the current style. Uh, his, you know, as a thicker girl, jeans are one of the hardest things, just bottoms in general, but jeans specifically are one of the hardest things for me to find. So first I'm gonna show you the jeans, one of the pair of jeans that I got and I tried them on and they fit, oh, it's amazing. So I got these jeans from Airy. These are the curvy dream drape, super high rise, baggy wide leg jeans. So it's a lot of descriptors, but they look like this. They're this like mid rise. They have this like cool like pocket detailing and they're almost structured kind of like a cargo pant but not quite because they do have an actual like cargo pant uh a medium wash with like a little bit lighter on the thigh uh these look really great i'm very excited about these and they were on sale which i love and then i have an order from abercrombie i've honestly had this for almost two weeks probably without opening it because i just haven't felt like filming this this um part of the video and I'm just like well I'll just leave it there until I'm ready to film it um I ordered four things I think yes three tops and one bottom because again my search for the perfect pair of jeans I know the Gen Zers or whatever don't like a skinny jean but as a curvy girl a skinny jean it, it still does wonders for me so but they don't even in Africa but they don't even sell the skinny jeans in store you gotta go online to get them so i got this bodysuit in this p 
pink color because I really like pink. Uh, I'm in my pink era and I think pre color my hair, pink looked amazing on me. Pink still looks good on me, but it does clash with my hair. So I don't wear it as often as I was before. Uh, especially not when my hair is down. But I got this pink bodysuit. A lot of the girls have been going on and on about like skins dupe, skins dupe. Uh, and well, honestly, I would say Abercrombie's a dupe, but I feel like it's in a similar price range. So that really isn't significant. But they added this new baby pink color. It's crew neck, long sleeve. I might film in this today, but I'm wearing my hair down, so probably not. Uh, cute and I got this in an extra large depending on the fabric I usually get a large or an extra large but most likely an extra large in their bodysuits but they have a lot of stretch to them so I can fit a large if I want to I got another bodysuit so this is like a slinky material um that's not great because I'm sure it does say what type of material it is uh but this is like that seamless material that's kind of how I would describe it without just I'm trying to find a tag so I can tell you the fabric um let's see nylon this is nylon and elastane so that's why it's so stretchy and like very form-fitting and then this one i want to say is probably more cotton and i got it in this taupe color which i think looks really good on my skin and this is like a similar style but a different fabric and I love the color and I feel like I could wear this to work or I could wear this like out somewhere. Um, the fabric on this one is, this is 95% cotton, 5% elastane. So uh, soft, has some stretch to it, but not nearly as stretchy as that. These don't really look like much, just, holding them up but they look really good and you can dress them up dress them down wear them with jeans wear them with like a trouser whatever um i got one more top and then i'll show you the last which is a pair of jeans i got this white like stone white blouse um it has like a little off the shoulder moment which i love love someone some shoulders some collarbones very sexy um looks like this also a bodysuit because you know can't escape that all of these tops are in the extra large and this is similar to the first fabric but not quite as slinky and this one let's see i guess i'm telling y'all fabrics and stuff now this one is 92 percent nylon eight percent elastane so um similar but not quite as elasticy as that pink top but yeah i think this is gonna look so cute on the little dainty necklace i think it's gonna be really cute and then last but not least i got a pair of jeans i tried on jeans in store trying to figure out what length i need i'm short but i don't think i'm short enough that i need the short so i got regular and then um you know depending on the jean depending on how, how stretchy it is or how rigid but i did get the curved love line so if you are curvy those are the better ones because they have like extra two inches in the thigh and in the hip so you don't have like the gaping so these are the jeans these are black skin supposed to be skinny jeans i don't know we'll see they, they're looking a little but yeah, this is the high rise skinny and curve in the curve love line. Can never go wrong with black denim. So yeah, those are the clothes that I picked up. We got three tops and two pairs of jeans. Very excited about all of that. So I'm gonna hang all this up. Let's talk about the other book that I started. Uh, I was in a fantasy romance mood, so I haven't been reading many books that are on my physical TBR. I've been reading books that are on the ebook for or rereading stuff so it doesn't impact my physical TBR. So I wanted to pick up something that I own physically. So I picked up Trials of the Sun Queen by Nisha J. Tooley. This is the first book in the, what is the series called? The Oranos, the, what is it called? It's something Oranos. Uh, let's see but this was originally self-published and it was picked up by forever which is like uh, a subsidiary of Hachette so it's related to Orbit 
Uh, it was picked up last year. There are two books in the series and the sequel. The Aurora King was in the Goodreads Choice Awards for Romanticy. Uh, I think this is something Elements of Oranos, but it's not on the spine and I can't find like the page where it has like the author's name and the books that they've done. There isn't a page like that in here. But anyway, this is a a competition type style romance fantasy romance so we follow our main character lore who at the beginning of the novel she is in this like prison camp with her two older siblings they c allegedly committed crimes but you know this isn't the most morally correct world so whether or not they really did anything is up to you know interpretation but she actually didn't commit any crime or anything she was just thrown in with them and she is her and her siblings are people who have been in this prison the longest is called Nostraza and they live in the Aurora Kingdom and the Aurora Kingdom is like an eternal night and in their sky they have like the Aurora Borealis I think is what it's called uh that's what their night sky and it's also part of their magic and uh she is very rowdy and so in the beginning she starts this fight with this girl who stole a bar of soap and she is sent to the hollow which is like this hole in the ground out in the wilderness where like solitary confinement she's sentenced to two weeks out there and so you might she's been there before for seven days where you have no food no water and you're open to the elements so any like creatures or anything can happen to you and mysteriously uh this this creature comes to Tom comes towards her but also she is like stolen away while this prison riot is happening introducing our second pov which is nadir who is the prince of the aurora kingdom and our secondary pov and so even though fast forward she's in this competition in this neighboring land like sun kingdom to be the sun queen and so it's kind of like the selection where these 10 girls are tributes and, and they have to play this competition in this game and they're all kind of like courting the king of this land to decide who is going to be the queen so she's in this competition and she doesn't really know why because again she comes from this prison and she's not from this country uh and we follow the second pov and we're following him and he we get his pov and finding out what's going on because his father the king is like corrupt but he's really invested in this girl who is a prisoner and i'm like okay usually if we get a second pov in a romance c series the second pov is a love interest but we're watching her connect with the sun king he's really beautiful he's really like charismatic he has this like magnetism about him and he's fey so the rulers they are fey so they are high fey and they are imperial fey and the fey create the magic in this world and they can like imbue objects with their magic for humans and mortals to use so it's interesting because we're watching her interact with the sun king and fall for him but i'm like the second pov like how is he connected like you know how is this gonna go on so it's a very quick read i read 256 pages of this yesterday um just and it didn't take me very long to get through that so i'm enjoying this i anticipate finishing this tonight after i finish filming so yeah that is what i'm reading and these will be the final two books of the vlog i'm not going to be reading empire of silence in this because i'm reading that for another vlog but i wanted to add another book in as well because i didn't feel like i had read enough in this vlog so yeah i'm gonna get ready to film and i'm gonna talk to you later when i have finished these two books i was in such a hurry uh to wrap up that clip earlier that i didn't even show you like my home all type stuff so i took a little visit to lush and i picked up a couple things for myself um mainly some bath bombs and i think i got like a shower oil thing so let's quickly go over that also got like a little freebie this is a sultana of soap so a little freebie um let's see what it is little bar of soap i'll just pop that into my bathroom and then i got a couple different bath bombs because i really like having a bath it's very relaxing it's like a treat after a long hard day um so i don't remember what anything is called unfortunately but i got this plain white one and maybe i'll take a bath with one of these tonight and i'll show it to you then i got i know i got like one or two from their like valentine's collection or maybe just one but you can tell when you see it um i got this one and it has like roses in it so that's exciting and it smells fantastic i got 
this like it's like king of something shower oil bar so you put it on after at the end of your shower and then you rinse it off and it leaves you really moisturized like moisture and you know hydration is really important especially in the winter i don't want to be ashy and crusty i want my skin to be soft and supple and then i got one more and this is the one from the valentine's collection i just thought it was super cute i'm very easy to please with stuff like this how pretty it's like a little a little envelope a little letter with a heart on it i thought that was cute and then I also went to Bath and Body Works uh, because I needed some more wallflowers because mine had been empty for a while and I just had not visited. And there were like the dregs of the semi-annual sale so I got a couple things that are seasonal that I really like. So um, I got mahogany coconut. These are always like 5 for 27 So I got mahogany coconut. It's a lot of mahogany because I really like it. I got mahogany teakwood, the sexy staple. And then I got mahogany vanilla. And then I like the calming ones. So this is white tea and sage. And this is botanical and blooms. And then last but not least, I got the stress relief eucalyptus and spearmint. And this is what I will put in my bedroom. Because I only, I'm in my bedroom when I'm sleeping. That's the only time I'm in there. Because I want to make sure that I know that this is a place for sleeping. So when I, I don't have trouble falling asleep. I don't like work or do anything like that in my bed. So this is always the one that is in my bedroom because it gives good bedroom vibes. Uh, very relaxing, very soothing. Like if I take a bath and I get in the bed and the aromatherapy and it's just, it's a good vibe. I got two of the seasonal candles on sale. So I got crushed candy cane and twisted peppermint. I really like mint scented candles and you can never find these only during Christmas. The only like mint ones you're going to find throughout the year are like the eucalyptus and mint. And while I do like that, obviously, I do like it's a, just a straight mint, straight peppermint candle. And so these do smell a little bit different. This one is crunchy peppermint, mint leaf, and sugar crystals smells so refreshing and like a cool mint scent in winter is just perfect and then this twisted peppermint is just just that this one obviously is more minty this one like i don't know how to describe this one smells more artificial this one smells more natural uh but i like them both and they're very pink which i like and then i got one of the new collection candles and there were several in this new collection that I was interested in, but I had to go with the bookish one. And so this one is Book Loft. And it is, does it, is, does it even describe the fragrance notes? Uh, it says cozy up under a warm blanket as you turn the pages of your favorite book. It doesn't really say what the fragrances are. Let's see if I can describe it. It has like a really fresh scent fresh kind of like cotton and leather is how i would describe it which i know is not very helpful but i also thought that the vessel was really pretty and i always save these so i'm like maybe i'll order the like things where you could pour into it and just burn it or clean them out and repurpose them i don't know but yeah so those are the things that i got from bath and body works and lush i'm in the middle of filming i just filmed my february tbr and so now i need to change and film my second video of the day i uh, haven't done any more reading because obviously i've been getting ready and then i have been filming so i will talk to y'all later like i said when i finish those two books hello friends it is a bit later um i'm not in my best state but i did finish lord of chaos and i wanted to come and talk to you about it those last 50 pages so much happened so much happened i absolutely love the way that it ended rand seems to be on this trajectory where perhaps he is not going to be good um and, and perhaps not but it, he's amassing all this power and this is one of the not one of the first times but this is a very key moment where we really see him flex his power and we really see the community and the the strength of this force that he has 
like cobbled together we really get to see that for the first time in a very interesting and exciting way and you can tell that the way that this ended the, the like the final scene of the book before we get to that blog this is going to be a pivotal moment that changes the direction of the series from here on out and i'm really looking forward to seeing how it develops i already borrowed the audiobook for crown of swords i'm really looking forward to reading it and it's significantly shorter than this one like the audio for this is 42 hours and the audio for crown of swords is only 30 so excited you know to have a shorter book especially because that is allegedly where the slog starts so i'm gonna be spending you know if those aren't gonna be as good then you know it's good they're at least gonna be shorter uh, but I enjoy this so much. I really think that if you struggle with real time, but you're still interested, this is only if you're interested. If you're still interested, you're still intrigued, you want to know, I highly, highly, highly recommend the audiobooks. Um, I'm really enjoying my time with the audiobooks. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I plan. I, this is the second year in a row where I had a series that I knew I wanted to start. I wanted to read some of, but I, for whatever reason, I didn't put on my priority. And just the way that this has ended and the direction that it's going in, I'm just like, yeah, I had planned to at least read like three more Will of Time books. So it's like my unofficial 19th series on my priority series CBR. But this was so good. And that is the fourth. And that is the fourth um book from my January TBR that I have read uh I read like 30 more pages of what's it called the Charles of the Sun Queen but I want to take this makeup off and get in bed because it is a school night I have work in the morning so I'm probably gonna finish still probably gonna finish it tonight but I don't want to still be up and dressed it's like 10 20 uh i don't want to still be up and dress or whatever to read a whole other 100 pages and then wrap this up because that's gonna push me past my bedtime so i will see y'all tomorrow to close the vlog hello friends i have finished trials of the sun queen so i am back to wrap up the vlog so i finished this one and i enjoyed it I enjoyed it enough that I would be interested in reading this series, but I don't think I'm going to be collecting them. Uh, this one is on KU. It was um, like self-published before it was picked up, so if you still want to read it, you can still get it on KU. Uh, some of my questions about like the love interest situation were definitely answered by the end. Not fully, but enough that I'm like, okay, I see where this is going. There is some intrigue and like some scheming going on. And I think that we're going to see the story go in a different direction and have a little bit of a quest in the second book, which is Rule of the Aurora King. Um, the I, I don't know how many books are going to be in this series. But so far, only this one and the second one are out, but I anticipate book three coming out in 2024 um i think this is one that if you just want a fun silly time you like a competition element you can pick it up but i, I don't think this is a spoiler so but if you don't want to know anything about the book you know just skip over until i put the book down or until yeah you see me put the book down and i'll pick it back up but this is a, a story similar to akatar similar to gil by raven kennedy where the love interest that is the love interest in the first book is not the end game love interest so i'm putting the book down so if you didn't want to hear that you can come back uh and now i'm gonna finish out my review uh i'm not writing books this year i think i've already mentioned that you haven't seen me give ratings to the other books that i've written this vlog but i did enjoy this and i think that if you want you're watching something that is following a main character with a little bit more grit um and things like that and you like a setting where there's a romantic competition going on i think you can pick this up but you can tell by the way that the story went but that the series is going to go beyond that in the second book and that the competition is no longer going to be a factor uh there is definitely some political machinations going on behind the scenes and we start to get a little bit more of that in the like final chapters of this book so i'm interested to see where it goes i have uh checked out the second book from KU I don't know that I would hold on to this I guess it depends on how I feel about the second book it doesn't feel like a new favorite but it is a fun time and I enjoy my time reading it and I like wanted to pick it up when I was reading it so yeah we have reached the end of the vlog I hope you enjoyed it if you made it to the end of the vlog go ahead and leave a sun emoji for trial of the sun queen and I will see you in my next one goodbye